Hey, what's going on, everybody? It is Matthew with the second episode today of the My Favorite WWF Hasbro Tournament. Uh, once again, it is Saturday, uh, Saturday, February 26th. And, uh, nope, I take it back. It is Saturday the 25th. And um, we are working on Series 10. So we do have four individual matchups. So it's going to be a pretty easy video per usual. Uh, so these last uh, four or five videos are probably hovering around 20 minutes. So nothing uh, super crazy, super long. And we got a couple tag teams here. So you're going to see relatively the same figures squaring off against each other. So those matchups probably want to take a couple minutes to talk about them. You know, not a whole lot to say about uh, either, either figure, but, uh, uh, we will dive right into the first matchup. So, basically repeating uh, Series 2. Hasbro came out in Series 10 with a new set of Bushwhackers. Now, I absolutely love these figures, no doubt. I think I still kind of like the black and gray uh, Bushwhackers of Series 2 a little bit better. But... There's no doubt. I mean, I love the new camouflage pants that they provide. Kind of more of like a Desert Storm type of color scheme here. A little Desert Camouflage pants. Uh, so one thing they did do with the Series 10 uh, Bushwhackers that are different from uh, Series 2. We'll start with this figure. So in Series 2, Luke of the Bushwhackers had this little feature right here. Now in series 10, they made this feature on Butch. And likewise, Butch was the one that had this feature on series 2, where Luke is now the series 10 version of this body mold. So, play-wise, there's no doubt that the Luke figure right here is the much better option. But aesthetically, I just really love this look right here. And this figure, whether you're looking at, well, with this body pose, whether you're looking at the Series 2 or Series 10, is always going to be more valuable than this version anyways. So, Bushwhackers, uh, without, without their accessories... You're looking at, I'm talking about mint condition or at least close to mint. You're, the original Series 2, you're probably looking at maybe $20 figures, if that. Whereas these are probably going to sell for somewhere around $125. Now, it all depends on the seller, of course. You know, you could get these for as low as 40 bucks, And you, this seller over here could get as high as 150 160 on auction. So, uh, obviously those who are more prone to selling Hasbro's, dealing in these figures. Yeah, they're going to get more, but that's the only reason I like these more because obviously value-wise, but uh, I still like the black and gray, as I said. But again, beautiful figures. I'm glad they, they were able to come out with uh, another set of figures for the Bushwhackers. Same issues with the Series 2. You cannot stand these guys. They always have to lean up against somebody. I kind of have these like either taped down or whatnot to try and keep them in, in place, but doesn't work so accessories really help they didn't come with any accessories in series two of course uh in series two they did come on a two pack where in series 10 they were released individually um yeah hands down uh, i am going with butch uh for series 10 victor uh too much to me it's an easy choice butch of Bushwhackers moves on to round two. All right, so another set of tag teams that were released in series 10 features the Head Shrinkers. We've got Samu and we've got Fatu. Essentially the exact same figures. The only difference is, well, for starters, they kind of mirror each other here with the with the little feet wrap. And do they do anything with the elbow and wristbands? Nope, those are identical as well. 
So, I mean, that's pretty much the only difference. I mean, obviously, the, the head sculpt, you have to change the face and everything so that you can actually tell them apart. But as far as body-wise, everything is relatively the same. Same fighting stance. You know, they both have that little jumping feature and whatnot. For the sake of this particular matchup, because they are relatively identical in every way, I would probably go with Samu just because I kind of like the fact that he sticks his tongue out at you. <laughs> um, but either way, I mean, these guys are, you know, they're great figures nonetheless. And oddly enough, even though, you know, we don't enjoy fused legs, these are bigger guys, you know, than, you know, let's say if you were to compare these to the Rockers. They're a lot more top-heavy than the Rocker figures, yet I feel like these figures here stand so much better than the Rockers. Like, the Rockers are constantly tipping over. Even though these are top-heavy, they actually stand pretty well on their own. You know, I never really had any problems with these guys tipping over, so that's a, a nice little deal with these guys as well. Head Shrinkers, again, I don't know. Uh, one of these guys actually became manager... Uh, Am I thinking of it backwards? Nope, I take it back. I think it was, uh, was it Sika? Sika Rafa, I can't remember. One of the Wild Samoans became the Head Shrinkers manager. Uh, I actually knew at one point, but now I'm getting it backwards. I can't never remember. I, I want to say Sika for the sake of uh, this conversation. And Head Shrinkers. The only thing I could ever remember about these guys, manager always grabbing by the back of the head, kind of... You know, dragging them down the aisle, Royal Rumble style, tossing them into the ring, brutalizing these guys. Always head buddy people and, you know, knocking them unconscious. I'm like, how hard have you guys got to be? Mm. I mean, a lot of fun either way. Head shrinkers, beautiful looking figures. Uh, Samu is your winner. I really wish I had, like, more backstories or something to give, but... I just don't have uh, those type of memories, you know. I just can't like, and, you know. I've, oddly enough, I bought all of these old cassettes to kind of like re refresh, you know, old memories. You know, a lot of things I I didn't even remember, didn't think about, and then I watch these old videos. I'm like, oh yeah, 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 I remember that. Yeah, but like, if I had never seen that, I never would have even thought of you know anything like that. But uh. It sucks when you're getting older. Um, I don't know if it's TBI or whatnot, but like, uh, I don't have like regular like memory loss. Like, uh, you know, you, uh, you, you get your electric bill and you write out the check and everything, put in the envelope, you know, put it down on the table, go make yourself a cup of coffee, and then you grab your keys and you know go out to the car and you drive off. And then a week or, or uh, a block or two down the road, you're like, oh man, I, I forgot to check on the table. You know, that's just simple forgetfulness. No, this is like, uh, you know, your wife asks you to uh, make her a burger and you do. And, and then you walk over to the table, you pick something up that just came in from eBay. You walk into the basement, you put it on the shelf, you come back upstairs and you're like, oh shoot, you asked me to make you a burger, didn't you? And then she looks at you like you're nuts because, hey, you already made it for me. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's really getting hard to like remember stuff and, uh, long-term memory, obviously it, it does help a little bit to come kind of rehash some old things, but, uh, it, it sucks. Uh, the wife and I kind of talk about that as well, um, struggling memory loss it's uh had to go to the va trying to get like tested and stuff i hate that they always give me excuses like uh you know you're too young for alzheimer's or whatever i'm like well nobody's claiming alzheimer's but i'm just saying that it, this stuff is it's uh prevalent it's not simple memory loss it's you know uh you ask me to grab something, I walk out to the room to grab it, I know exactly what you're talking about, and I gotta come back in like three or four times to, to ask you what you asked me for, because like, the second I walk through the threshold, it's gone. Anyways, enough of that, guys. Uh, <laughs> the fact that I can still remember these guys' names, I mean, that's, 
that's something, I guess. <laughs> uh, this is a tough one. Because these are two really phenomenal figures. Uh, two figures that I really wanted to see go very, very, very far in this competition. And based on this matchup, not going to happen. <sighs> the Giant Gonzalez is squaring off against the second or the variant of Razor Ramon. As we know, back in Series 7, Razor Ramon came out with black trunks or uh, red trunks and a uh, black vest. This time he's decked out in all purple. So the black and red Razor Ramon, kind of like a $40 or $50 figure. This one's more like a $75 to $125 figure. You give him an original uh, chain, you're looking at closer to $150. And we're talking about a loose hundred Razor Ramon with chain. So, you know, with a, uh, an original card. Probably close to like 350 so <laughs> both are absolutely fantastic figures are no doubt I do have Andre or Andre the Giant um I do have the Giant Gonzalez listed on my top 10 of all time perfect Hasbro wrestling figures I don't remember where I had him at some point I had him like number four or five but then as time went by you know guys like you know crush and I think Adam bomb or, or whatever uh, I think they eventually, you know, shot up that list and kind of, you know, usurped his spot. But this is a perfect figure. And the thing is, every time you find a Giant Gonzalez online, he is always in mint condition. Like, you never find one where he's got, you know, paint loss on the boots or fingertips are chipped or, you know, paint loss on the hair or anything. Either people never had this figure as a kid or they never played with it. I don't know because it's always crisp. It's just a perfect figure. You know, this is like a, another Ultimate Warrior Series 3 type figure. Fantastic play pose. An awesome look to it. Absolutely love it. And you've got Ray's Ramon who is, again, a fan favorite. He's got a fantastic look for it. Great play pose. Awesome accessory. There's just nothing wrong with the Razor Ramon figure. You've already already eliminated Series 7 Razor Ramon. And imagine if this guy doesn't win this matchup. You just have two of two really phenomenal figures gone in the first round. And no Razor Ramon to, to move forward from round two onward. Can I do that? to the bad guy I'm gonna have to I mean it's a great figure value wise of course you, you choose this one over pretty much majority of the other Hasbros no doubt but we're talking about appearance we're talking about play pose and this is about as perfect of any action figure as you're ever gonna find and uh, unlike most people, I didn't mind the Giant Gonzalez as a kid. Uh, when he came out with that little, you know, skin bear suit type thing that was attached to his body. I, I don't know. Even today, today's standards, I still thought that looked really cool. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm just weird or something. But I, I always enjoyed that. A lot of people despise it, but I'm okay with it. <laughs> Uh, Giant Gonzalez moving on to round two. Uh, this is going to be another heartbreaking matchup because it features two absolutely elite figures. So in series two, we featured the Rockers. Possibly two of the worst action figures that Hasbro created. And then in series seven, they came out with a new variant of Shawn Michaels. This play pose with white pants and uh, red markings. Um, in Series 10, they re-released that exact same figure, except they re released it with black pants and gray markings. This is molded after like the Macho Man Series 1 body type and a bunch of other figures. An absolute perfect figure, there is no doubt, but... 
in Series 10, they finally came out with a perfect replacement for that hideous Series 2 Marty Jannetty. And for the first time, and, and what, what sucks about the figure is they recycled Marty Jannetty's Series 2 head. So they got a new mold for him and everything. And I think they've got the exact same body here too. Yeah, so these are literally the exact same figure. <laughs> um, so if this is like a top two, top three, top four, whatever you want to say, action figure from Hasbro, and this is essentially the same figure, you would think that this would be the top ten, and it should be. But with so many great Hasbros, I have to have this guy in the top 15, top 20. This is an absolutely amazing piece. I am dying to see Marty Jannetty go to three, four rounds or more if, 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 if it plays out that way. Problem is, you're putting two elite figures against each other in the first round and it sucks. I don't want to do that, but you're going to have to eliminate some guys. Heavyweight champion, Aaron Connell champion, a true champion in every sense. I really love the fact when they finally allowed Marty Jannetty to win the Intercontinental Championship. I think he only held it for like a day or something. I don't know. I think he was a very short-term champion. But, you know, hearing that he finally made the, got some kind of championship and got finally got some kind of recognition, I don't care if he held the championship for one hour. The fact that he was champion and he, you know, he could retire laying claim to the fact that he held a championship belt, that to me is enough. He had a great career. Absolutely loved the Rockers. Seeing them separated was horrible. Seeing them square off in this matchup, this sucks. But I feel like we all knew coming up uh, with this matchup that uh, Shawn Michaels was an absolute no-brainer. I mean, as I said, this has got to be a top five elite figure on anybody's list of Hasbro figures. So, Shawn Michaels, Black Pants variant, does move on to round two. So, uh, that is going to conclude the Series 10 video. And I'm just kind of like looking at this. So I think I went to like Figure Realm or whatever to just kind of like, you know, look at the different series and, and look at the years that the uh, the figures were released. And it's showing Series 6 all the way through Series 10 were all released in 1993. But then again, it was also showing Series 11 released in 1993, but I think Series 3 or Series 11 was 1994. Or at least majority of it was in 1994. I don't know. All right, so series 11. I'm gonna have 11 fig or seven figures. So right now I've got Adam Bomb squaring off against one two three kid. Uh, Bart Gunn is gonna square off against Billy Gunn. Yoko Zuna is gonna square off against Ludwig Borga, which is gonna leave a purple crush remaining. So. I can either add a custom, which I don't think I have any customs to have them square off against. Mm. Maybe I could do like one of the mailway figures or something. Mm. You know what? I'll, I'll, I'll pick a custom figure to, for him to face because I'm going to have to. Um, and then in the next video after that, I can start doing the custom figures. Uh, I'll start with a couple of mailways, and which aren't actual mailways. They are customs, of course, but again, customs, mailway, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then from there, we will dig into the customs, and then we will move on to round two. And uh, yeah, hopefully it's uh, going to really uh, have a uptick in the competition and excitement. <laughs> All right. Um, so nothing else uh, from the last video that I mentioned. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to end here, immediately start the Series 11 video, and I will talk to you guys in the comments. Thanks, everybody.